Now let's see how we can suppress or we can optimize the dynamic power dissipation. So as we know this is our average power dissipation in the circuit due to a particular signal switching. So if you see in this formula we have the trump VDD which is nothing but supply voltage. So if we lower down the supply voltage our dynamic power dissipation gets minimized. So this is nothing but called dual VDD. So if if we have a circuit where some portion of the circuit needs to be operate at higher VDD, some needs to be operate at lower VDD. And so in these kind of designs we can have dual voltage. So this particular design is called nothing but dual VDD design. So we can apply this concept dual VDD and we can design our circuit at two different levels where lowering the supply voltage of some portions can optimize the overall dynamic power. Then we can dual voltage and frequency scaling DVFS where we also have the uh, voltage and frequency scaling both together. So if we can have the circuit design such that that circuit the different parts of the circuit can operate at different voltage and different frequency depending on the uh, functionality then we can have this design concept DVFS applied to the circuits. Now if you see the dynamic power dissipation is also depending on the load capacitance. So how we can minimize the load capacitance. So the capacitance is nothing but A epsilon by D right the formula of the capacitance is nothing but a epsilon by this is nothing but the area and the this area and this is nothing but the width so this is the capacitor then this is the cross sectional area and this is the distance between the two plates of the capacitor so if if you remember we have if, if this is our inverter circuit and this is some another inverter circuit like this so the input and output node both nodes have their associated capacitance so if you have gone through and if you have if you know something about the capacitance association with the transistor then for a transistors there will be input and output capacitors gate to source drain to source capacitance effects at the transistor level so i won't be covering the capacitance effects at the transistor levels but because of the capacitive nature at the transistor level there will be capacitance associated at every transistor input and output level and here we have the input capacitance here we have the output capacitance because of this inverter and we have input capacitance from this inverter so if we in include more inverters if there are more cells are there they will have all their input capacitance which will be again coming in parallel to this output capacitance of this inverter. So if we decrease the fan out, so if we decrease the fan out, this our output load capacitance is basically decreasing and if the load capacitance decreases, then the dynamic power will also decrease. Then also there is a RC effect because of the wire length, the interconnects. So the interconnects will also cause the large capacitance. So wire length, this wire length can also be minimized to optimize the load capacitance and the transistor sizing the transistance capacitance is also proportional to the wl length and width of the transistor so at transistor level then at fan out level and then interconnect level if we can optimize this is like well, let's say physical design concept so if we can optimize all these things our dynamic power can be minimized that the, the load capacitance can be minimized and which will result in the dynamic power optimization then we have the switching activity this alpha factor so if a signal is switching fast it will have more power dissipation so if the circuit switching can be minimized by the effect of encoding or clock gating so as i said earlier by encoding we can map the data such that there there is less activity happening in the data or the data toggling toggling is less so if the data toggling is less that will directly proportional to the our uh, dynamic power dissipation so the less data toggling and the less activity will result in less power dissipation and the clock gating for example we have a flip flop and the, the, the this is the clock signal and this is the data signal even though the data signal is not changing for for so many clock signals if the clock signal is apply getting applied to the flip flop then the flip flop switching there is a, some internal load of the flip flops are are basically uh, charging or discharging so that is causing the dynamic power dissipation so if there is no data toggling happening at all in that particular time the switch can be the, the clock can be removed so there is no switching happening in the flip flop and that can also be helpful in minimizing the, minimizing the dynamic power dissipation we will see uh, at what levels and we will also see uh, also cover some interviews on clock gating where uh, by the application of clock gating how in different ways we can optimize the uh, circuit and ultimately we can minimize the power dissipation which is nothing but dynamic power dissipation. 
again we have the claw frequency frequency scaling so this is nothing as we discussed the dynamic voltage and frequency scaling so this concept basically applies to both voltage and frequency scaling so again by decreasing the frequency of the circuit we can optimize our dynamic uh, power dissipation so here if you see these are all the components in dynamic power dissipation where activity factor load uh, supply voltage and switching so by means of applying all these concepts at the circuit level we can have our dynamic power dissipation minimized so this is what i have put here which we discussed in our previous slide now the clock gating so as we discussed here using the clock gating actually we can minimize the activity factor of our circuit so the one one way is by using the clock gating technique so if we see here this is our original flip flop so we have this flip flop this is the clock going to the flip flop we also have a selection line and when the selection line is high the input will be going to the flip flop otherwise whatever the data was there at the previous cycle that will be uh, basically again feeding to the flip flop so at every clock cycle the flip flop is performing some switching the flip each and every node inside the flip flop is basically switching at every clock cycle because we have not gated the clock here so even if the data even if the selection line selection line is zero if the selection line is zero then the previous data is only going to be at the flip flop output but because of the clock which is directly applied to the flip flop at every clock cycle the flip flop is doing its function so that is basically unnecessary we don't want the flip flop to function when there is no data change uh, if there is no data change at the input of the flip flop we don't have to clock the flip flop to function so if we get the clock signal with this selection line by applying a and get here so whenever there is a selection line the clock will be applied to the flip flop and the input data will go to the output so the functionality of this circuit is similar to the this circuit but the switching of the clock has minimized here now the clock at the flip flop clock signal is only switching when the real data at input has to be propagated to the output so this is one example of the clock getting through which we have basically minimized the switching activity of our clock signal which will result in reduced dynamic power dissipation so now this is example of one another important concept here this is a circuit level concept where the glitches unwanted glitches if there are unwanted glitches in the circuit that means those situations for example the input is for example this z output is supposed to be zero but there is so time for that there is a glitch here so this glitch means this node is basically charging here so when there is charging and discharging happens the dynamic power occurs so these kind of glitches also can be removed if we remove these kind of glitches by carefully designing our designing our circuit the dynamic power dissipation which is occurred due to glitches can also be minimized so here there is an example here suppose the the signals at input a and input here b are coming at the same time but because of this and get delay the input a is basically getting delayed now the next concept through which we can optimize our dynamic power dissipation is through the circuit transformation so in this example let's consider that we have a high switching activity node here so how we can transform this circuit so that so that this node can become a low activity circuit so we have to basically design the circuit in different form and calculate the power so if we transform this circuit into this circuit it can reduce the activity of this activity of this particular node so this node here was high, at higher activity but the activity can be reduced at here without without disturbing the functionality so if the activity can be reduced here the dynamic power dissipation will also reduced so by carefully transforming the circuit from one type to another type without affecting its functionality can also be done in order to optimize the dynamic power dissipation